Yes, uh, talks between Iran and the West that took place uh, over the weekend, Flo. That's right. It's in a lot of editorials today. Let's start by looking at the international New York Times that says that though these negotiations were disappointing in a lot of ways because they were inconclusive, and in fact the blame game has been starting as to just who's to blame, a lot of the press is optimistic, like the international New York Times. They say that though these talks are unfinished, they're alive. And remember, diplomacy takes time. China Daily is also hopeful and says that even though there was no agreement, there appears to be progress. There are positive signs that there could be some sort of a peaceful resolution, says China Daily. Uh, the U.S. and Iran finally seem to be walking in the same direction. This is good momentum that could bring a concrete result in the next round of talks at the end of the month. And uh, China Daily says this could actually raise the possibility of Iran playing a more constructive role in Syria and in Afghanistan. Now, Flo, you found a piece um, about France, but it's in the Wall Street Journal, um, playing close attention to the role that France played in these That's talks. right. It's rare for the Wall Street Journal to have nice things to say about France, mm. but today they <laughs> talk about the role that France has been playing in these negotiations. France stunned some observers with its hard-lined position on these, uh, during these negotiations with Iran, for instance, it quotes uh, Foreign Minister Laurent Fabius, who warned that the world risked being sucked into a fool's game uh, by Tehran. Now, the Wall Street Journal says that this has revealed a certain assertiveness of France in the Middle East. This tough talk, it says, has been building on years of uh, diplomatic maneuvering that's inc increased the country's influence in the Middle East. And it seems like France is taking more importance in the region while the U.S is uh, treading softly and perhaps scaling back a little bit its involvement in the region. And what about Iranians? What do they uh, make of the negotiations? Well, this is a very interesting piece in Ashark al Sat today that says that, you know what, Iranians, they actually don't really have an opinion on uh, this nuclear po program. What really matters to them is getting food on the table. Uh, and they're, what they're concerned about is the increase in prices of basic things like butter and eggs. And, and it points out that in May, Iran faced a, a national crisis due to a butter shortage because 95% of the country's butter is imported. So uh, according to this article, if Iran is seeking to reach an agreement, it's not because of the West's threats. It's because of fears of rising uh, anger, public anger. And this is the real threat that the Supreme Leader uh, Ayatollah Ali Khamenei is facing. You mentioned the Supreme Leader there. Um, quite a lot of focus on him as well. That's right. This is an incredible story in Le Figaro. This is based on a six-month investigation by Reuters. Now, it turns out that Khamenei controls a business empire worth $95 billion. That's a wow. huge sum sure. that exceeds the value of Iran's current annual petroleum exports. Now, basically, he's at the head of a little-known organization called Citad that holds stakes in nearly every sector of uh, the uh, industry, including the financial industry, oil industry, the ostrich farming industry as mm -hmm. well. Uh, basically, the, this organization, Citad, has built its empire by systematically seizing uh, thousands of properties and uh, reselling them, so kind of a property empire that it's built. And it's thanks to the revenue generated by this organization that Khamenei has managed to hold on to power for so long. Let's stay in the region uh, now. An opinion column in Liberation about uh, Syria. That's right. This is a piece by uh, research institutes that specialized in the Middle East called the uh, IREMO. And it points out that while the international community is really focused on what's happening in these Iranian negotiations, a major humanitarian crisis is threatening Syria. And that's starvation. And according to this article, this is a strategy that Bashar al-Assad is trying to put in place, basically to starve his people. And this article points out just what a what a well-organized uh, strategy this is that cuts off the food supply to certain areas. And this uh, article blames the international community for its silence on the matter. Finally, Flo, um, British pop star Lily Allen. Remember her? She's released a new single, apparently. It takes a, a jab at explicit music videos. That's right. Lily, Lily, Lily Allen, mm. rather. She's been away for four years, and she's making wow. her comeback yeah. with a song uh, called Hard Out Here that tackles the challenges of being a woman in the sexist uh, entertainment world that's obsessed, of course, with our image and objectifies women. Uh, sure. Now, it's a really catchy song, and I recommend uh, looking at the video. You can see a little photo there, a screen grab. Mm -hmm. um, she really takes a shot at other music videos that we've been hearing a lot about. Uh, for instance, the very controversial Robin Thicke Blurred Line mm -hmm. video. Miley Cyrus, of course, uh, who's been yeah. 
more known for Ridicule, her twerking yeah. than uh, her songs. Rihanna as well. Uh, Slate also looks at this uh, new video by uh, Lily Allen, says that it's a welcome antidote to much of what's out there. Uh, so check it out today, Hard Out Here by Lily Allen. Yeah, painful fingernail she's got there, though. <laughs> Excellent. Thank you, Flo. A lot more from Flo in the newspapers, of course, coming up here on France Van Cap. Coming up for you, the latest step from the Philippines. Plus, if you are about to retire, where to? Of course, is the question. Have you thought of Portugal? Well, perhaps you should. We're going to be telling you exactly why soon, but it's to do with tax. That comes up in today's Focus after the break. <laughs> <laughs> 